Hello everyone, it's me, Stella Nova, and today I am bringing you something special. We were invited this year to CRX 2024, and on Sunday, Deadline and Zamfir had a discussion online with Jim Drew, the legend of the Commodore community, as well as Yuri, the creator of the online CRX community, and they talked about all things wackadoodle, as well as the evolution of the relay board projects all the way from the beginning fireworks up until how it was used in the wackadoodle game. We're also really excited to hear that Yuri decided to make his own honkin heckin buttons trademark and wackadoodle game himself. And we are so excited to find out what his finished product looks like. So let's take a look and see what they see said. Jim, uh, I, I'm going to do a quick time check. I think you've got uh, yep. my correct, yes? Yep, and we, we're yep. going to let the people in the room right now. So we've got Citizen coming up next, and I'm going to let them in the room right now. Let's see if we get them. Howdy, howdy. Are you in? He was so well prepared. He was already like... Oh, there we go. Um, hey. There he is. He's uh, connected with audio. He's running to audio. audio. You can okay in Zoom that audio is now on. Yeah, it's, an, it's a Zoom issue. It's not you. Join with audio, it will say. Yep. So it's still connecting. Or you may need to reselect your uh, audio device. On the left bottom, you'll see audio with a little arrow next to it. Like your audio device there. There you, there you are. There we go. Okay. And, now I can yep. hear you. Yep, we got Thank you. you. How's it going? It's going. Good. Yep. You've My friend. The entire era of Commodore products behind you. I could see them all. If I look long enough, I see every other brand as well. Where are they hidden? <laughs> it's <Yeah>. like, <laughs> awesome. yeah, I see an Atari back there. I see an ST even, indeed. Well, I yeah. see a pet as well. There's a pet hiding there. Yes. I see a Vic hiding there. You should see my friend uh, Brian's stuff. He's going to be joining us, he said. So he's got even more stuff than I do. That's crazy. <laughs> mm. Okay, so you go by your group of citizen, right? Yeah, cities in is what we call Cities in, okay. Cities in. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And then, so I didn't know anything about you at all. Uh, Saj kind of set this whole thing up. And then Yuri said, oh, these guys are next to us. At, uh, oh, next to us at BCF. VCF uh, uh, Midwest, and they yep. bought an entire contraption with them. I called it the Whack-A-Mole machine. I am so sorry if that's <laughs> absolutely what you were not trying to achieve, but I saw that thing, and I'm like, that's the Whack-A-Mole. Oh, that's it. Yep. Yeah. It's called yeah. the Whack-A-Doodle. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to hopefully give you guys – are we on live right now? We are yeah, live. live yeah. You are yeah. live. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, we call it the Whack-A-Doodle game. And uh, it is kind of like whack-a-mole, but there's some differences to it. It's like we added uh, a way for you to use the concentration of your brain. So sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't. So it kind of brings a whole new element. Level two of a machine of a game that already was impossible for me. So this is like Simon versus uh, whack-a-mole? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nice. nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this is done on the C64 hardware? Yes. Cool. And uh, I, am, I gave uh, you guys a video. I don't know yep. if you have, have it. Have the video. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you, you want us to run roll? the video then? You want us uh, to roll that first? Um, I've got a little presentation, also a little slideshow that I wanted to show. Okay. How, would you, how would you like to stage it? Which which one would you like to do first? What is? Uh... I think that Probably if you show the video, that'll give everybody just a basic idea of what it is. Okay. And then we can go from there. Okay. Oh, let's do that. Sounds okay. good. I will go and find the video here and we will play it and we can all kill our videos. Yeah. Streams. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that we give all the screen space to the video. Yep. Okay. And that we pulled out the honkin' heckin' buttons trademark user interface we made last year and we designed a brand new game for the Commodore 64 and took it all to the Vintage Computer Festival Southeast at the Southern Fried Gaming oh, yeah. Expo 2024. 
What happened next? Stick around and find City out. Man. The main attraction here is the wackadoodle game. And uh, I made this game using Kick Assembler. Once I got it into a playable state, we did some pretty extensive playtesting, but I also took it to the Atlanta Historical Computer Society so that we could get some feedback from actual users. And we want to give a special shout out to Log from the Atlanta Historical Computer Society. This guy is single-handedly the reason why we had to increase the timer speed-ups. Although seeing it being played at the show, we might want to turn down some of the settings just a bit. But we are planning on putting on different modes so we can play this in like a bar setting or kids mode or something, like an arcade. I've already created an itch.io site for Wackadoodle so you can go and download it. Link will be in the description. But I will be putting it on the GitHub as well and covering it in future programming series. Also, side note, it's already been cracked and trained so you can have infinite lives. So you see it's hooked up to the user port here. I've got the Kung Fu Flash from the Future was 8-bit just so we wouldn't have to worry about hauling a disk drive out here, right? And so it goes down through the user port to the back of here and there's a relay board here and there's also power connected to light up the buttons. So I programmed the Commodore 64 to work this little button board that we made. We call it the Honkin' Heckin' Buttons trademark. Throughout the show, we received lots of feedback from folks who wanted to play the game at home with their own controller for the game. So, after the show, we reached out to our friend Mike at Retro Game Boys, who makes custom retro controllers for various retro systems. We asked him if he would be interested in designing an NES style controller that would work with the Wackadoodle. He was excited at the opportunity and started right away and sent us this video of his design in progress. We are super excited about his design, so look for that new controller in his shop when it becomes available and his link is in the description if you have any other custom controller needs. Another little side note is that we reached out to Saul Cross who wrote the fairground tune in the SID for the Commodore 64 and he allowed us permission to use his song. But here's where it gets even better. The background music you're listening to is by Saul Cross and he goes by SC12 and you can find him on Bandcamp and Spotify and I'll Make sure and we put a link in the description so you can go check his City music Man. out. So thank you SC12, you rock. As you can see it's very engaging and it's easy to understand once you get past the learning curve of learning the rules of the game. And so now, without further ado, we're going to go over the rules of Wackadoodle so that you can understand how the game works as well. City Man. So here are the rules for Wackadoodle. You have eight doodles that will pop up on any button at any time. Only one button will be lit up at a time and only one of the doodles will be active at a time. There are four bad doodles and four good doodles. The good doodles you do not hit and the bad doodles you do hit. So there's a little bit of concentration involved. You have six lives to begin. If you hit a good doodle, then you will lose one score and one life, but you can't go under zero for score. If you hit a bad thing, then you get plus one score. If you miss a bad thing, then you lose one life. And so it will time out if it is left unattended. One thing that is not mentioned in the instruction screen is that the game gets progressively faster and every 40 points that you score, it then again increases in speed and difficulty. And so that is the rules for Wackadoodle. We are going to try to port this over to Atari and Apple and other 8-bit systems, maybe even TRS-80, whatever we can figure out, right? But we're also going to try and port this over to Steam for PC and create a custom USB HID interface. 
on one other note, Idle Picks, the meatloaf creator, worked on an API to try and get in a high score system before the show, but we didn't have enough time. We did, however, get the meatloaf to transfer the high scores and also to enter contestants information into the website over at meatloaf so that is an exciting development in and of itself because we have meatloaf integration in wackadoodle it's just we have to get it more polished and so that is the wackadoodle game that we made for the crx presentation we hope you all enjoy it and check it out on our youtube channel and get it from um, HIO and you can actually go to the github site and check out the code and stuff like that thanks for having us here at CRX and we hope to see you on our YouTube channel where you subscribe and all that stuff thank you very much dude I'm so happy we got this video I, I you guys sat next to us I had no idea I I could not figure out how this game worked, but now I see what the real evil thing is. Uh -huh. Green is good, don't press. Red yeah. is bad. So you gotta like flip your mind as well. I'll tell you how committed I am to, to this thing. I'm so excited you're here. Let me show you this. Oh, wow. <laughs> this thing is gonna happen. That's awesome. No yes. 3D printed thing. I'm gonna make a big one. I wanna bring my I've got I've got a nine year old and I've got an eleven year old. One is in primary school still, the other one is now in uh, middle school. I'm gonna make something for their annual carnival. This thing is gonna be something it's gonna be set up, it's gonna happen. This is I love this. It's so creative. It's just it's so simple yet so creative. How do you come up with this? Oh well. Thanks for that. I mean, you know, it's funny because at Midwest, there was a guy who came up and he was like, where can I buy one of these? And yeah. I said, well, I don't know. Maybe I can make them and sell them, you know, but uh, how do we come up with it? Yeah, that's a good question. So it that kind of is what I've got our other presentation here for my little slideshow. You know, this is just sort of a current evolution in uh what we uh did with uh these relay boards yeah right i've got one here ready to go for our next project whatever that may be All right oh that is awesome so do you want to do you want to roll your uh, presentation do you want to bring up your presentation to go through yeah i'm going to try to figure out how to do that here and uh, there's there's a button called share on the in the middle okay i see it yeah, and then yep. you can select your screen that's already open. There you go. Okay, can you see it? Yep. yep. Hold up, yep, we see the uh, actual unit. Okay, so this is the wackadoodle game. It's just a photo of when we were nearing completion of it. And there, okay, so here's the schematics. Um, I've got uh, it based on this relay board set up, right? Goes through the user port. And the lights are actually powered by 12 volt uh, brick. So it's isolated from the Commodore by OptiCouplers and the relay board. So it's not going to damage it, right? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a close up review of the bottom, right? It's got the relay board with the lights and the switches under there. I love and, it. And uh, so this board that's below the relay board that's actually just a regular like pcb board that i soldered the wires that go to the joystick port onto it just sort of connect them right yeah there's a close-up of the relay board you can get these things off of amazon for like 10 bucks and the you know we we you saw where we talked to mike from retro game boys and he did like a mini version of it and this is him showing me pictures of when he did the prototype of it yeah you know oh. and here's just your basic schematic of how to hook up the relay board and at first i was like well i don't even know if this is going to work but we're just going to try it because these were made for like raspberry pies and things like that right yeah but i said hey let's give it a shot and it worked and uh the whole reason we did the relay board project in the first place is because 
we did a thing where we shot fireworks off with a Commodore and we needed a way for to interface it, right? Yeah. yeah. And so that's what uh, we did. And there's a little schematic down there that using that relay board, we uh, picked up nine volt battery. So SD's rocket igniter and it lights fuses that way. And so we wrote the program, you hit the button on the joystick, it fires off uh, the fireworks. Wow. Right. Very cool. And this is a picture of when I was just putting everything together for the very first time. I, I wasn't even sure if it was going to work, but it did. So that's pretty awesome. Nice. <laughs> uh, just a Lego thing we put around it for the first project we did. <laughs> I love the cap over the on off switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's a little spaceship, <laughs> that's uh, spaceship canopy. Cap. Yeah, I yeah. recognize it. That's so cool. And here's our setup for when we did the fireworks. It shot off all those fireworks, and it was pretty cool. So That is awesome. And, I mean, there's a video of that on our channel if anybody wants to go watch it. And here's another close-up of the schematic for that. Using the same basic relay board setup, right? So that was like the first project we really did. And then... I was like, well, what can we do next? And so I wrote this software that sequences the states of the relay board and we call it relay tracker. And so you can actually create a big long sequence of states for the relays, right? Yeah. And then play them back. And actually Sagtron used the relay tracker software at CRX 2019 oh, when yeah, he did his. I remember this. Yep, and I worked closely with him. He wanted to set it up to do, hook it up to work his little keyboard or something like that. And so yeah, I worked I with him and we got it going. All right. And uh, all this is on our GitHub page. You can go check it out. Lots of software from all of our projects and other video excursions, right? And so the next thing we did is we took the relay board we took the relay tracker and then we did a 2019 Christmas special where we hooked it up to a Commodore 64, a Commodore 128, and I made a special version for the Omega 500. Wow. And we hooked up 32 lights in our in my living room. And uh <laughs> you know, oh my goodness, that's nice. awesome. Yeah, and there's a video on our channel for that and I did a little cities in light up thing it was part of it but here's a little video no sound but it's the 128 version yeah commerce 64 playing the relay tracker and as you can see that's awesome nice. yeah but imagine that with all 32 lights going yeah and it's pretty cool right the next thing we did was the meat smoker program i called it the smoker door 64 <laughs> Smoker door 64 is great. <laughs> yeah. And uh hooked up uh I had an old meat smoker and the circuit board on it had gone bad. So I ripped it open. I was like, okay, where's the heating element stuff? Okay, where's the light? Let's get it hooked up to the relay board, right? And then I found this old video from Nostalgia Nerd where he had found in an old book how to read the temperature in through the a joystick port with the SID chip potentiometer stuff. Yep. Right. So we got that back. I got the 3D printer um, thermistor hooked it up yeah. and it worked. It all just worked. So all I had to do is write a basic program and get it all working. Yeah. That, you got this thing still hooked up? Yes. I use it quite often, actually. And <laughs> that's great. That is just <laughs> awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh there's yeah there's a here's a close-up of you know when i was first hooking it up um there's the software for it that's on our... <laughs> smoker door 64 version 1.0 nice yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's on our github page and we actually got on hackaday for that too yeah it's no no doubt oh my yeah goodness. How and there's great. our first brisket oh, <laughs> nice. oh nice oh my goodness i'm so hungry now <laughs> so that was the next step in the evolution of where we're at with wackadoodle then we went to uh southern fried gaming expo 2023 i believe it was right 
we made like a spinning trivia wheel. And uh, this is when we first made the honk and heck and buttons, right? Mm -hmm. Just a couple of real quick pictures of that. Uh, we made the program that uh, runs with the honk and heck and buttons. It was a trivia game program. And we had this trivia wheel. Uh, we didn't bring that anything this year it's kind of finicky and it got broke <laughs> but uh had a lot of delicate parts behind there see oh. so we did like a binary setup under there so it could read you know the settings of where it was at yeah if, right. that, yeah. if that makes sense sure You're using the cloth clips as well yeah yeah oh from oh mm -hmm. no yeah no oh oh my goodness this is so cool yeah <laughs> and it actually spins there's like one of those little spinning uh thing that transfers the wire conductors and there's some uh that's idopix the meatloaf guy he's using it and there's just our setup from that oh uh, okay and one other side note is i did get like a servo hooked up to the relay board and I don't think we, I did a video on that, but it was kind of a long and drawn out. And, I, and then we got our AI characters. I'm just going to go through that real quick. I didn't, I don't want to take up too many, too much time, but we program these things and make them have their little personalities. And that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. You know, we, we actually make the machines do stuff, you know? Right. Uh, so so uh, this is just amazing. How does this come all about? Can you kind of rewind time a little bit? You were 12 years old and how did this because this is like a very close cooperation between art and art and technology. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I got my first Commodore when I was 12. Like you said, I mean, I it's amazing how you guessed that. <laughs> but yeah, I got my Commodore started just doing all kinds of stuff with it. I didn't have a Vicrel or anything back then, but uh, me and my friend Brian, who runs the channel with me, we got we got to know each other in high school. Um, we went to the user groups back then, you know, and that's how we became friends. And we both wound up from our journey using the Commodore, getting into IT fields. I was in the Air Force. I got really high scores on like electronics so i got into communications and stuff like that um but where we're at now is you know we started watching all the other retro channels and we're like hey we can do stuff let's do it you know and uh so that's where we're at and you know early on in that process of doing our vids we're like man well we probably should do something that's gonna help us stand out a little bit because there's so much competition in the space you know yeah yeah and so that's where we're at so so uh what i like is many of the projects you use a, a, re a relay type of board eh? a pretty uh, uh simple components or readily available components but then used in very creative uh ways over and over again almost uh how do, how do you come up with these ideas? Are you just uh, sitting sitting together at an evening and thinking like, can I reuse that? Or it's it's so scrappy, but yet so so well thought through. It's just so, uh, yeah. I mean, me and me and my friends, we we go to this thing called the Waffle House. Oh yeah, thing <laughs> down here in the south. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I've only experienced it once so far, unfortunately. I've been there. Many California times. doesn't have any good quality of that where I live, unfortunately. So bless you. And so that was that's like, you know, I, it's our version of getting together and just bullshitting, or yeah. whatever. Excuse my language. I know. And uh, so we're like, hey, you know, we did this thing with the Commodore. We made it shoot fireworks. Well, what else can we do with it, right? Right. And, and then I was like, I know, I'm going to write a sequencer for it. And then we're like, okay, cool. You know, <laughs> and it just sort of goes from there. It's, it's, it's quite amazing. Are you typically, um, do you typically release on like GitHub? Do you see a lot of people that kind of take these designs or IDs 
to other places? Do you get feedback on that? Do you what do people do with the stuff that you you come up with? Um, I'm not real sure. I know that Sage Tron approached us with uh, his um, demo that he did a couple years ago. I I, I have been contacted by some folks, like um, I can't remember who it was, but somebody in the Amiga scene over in England somewhere, or it might have been Netherlands. Uh -huh. They were like, "Hey, I I love this." Um, really light stuff that you got going on and we were wondering if we could try and figure out how to get it into one of our sets you know to work with the with a mod player or something right and i'm just like well i don't know enough about programming to do that but someone that does could do you know right yeah yeah yeah, yeah i use use this i, I it's i I really like it. I'm I'm so happy. I, these buttons, I'm telling you, these buttons have been in a box here of my arcade. I do a lot of stuff on arcades as well, and I bought these with the ID. One day, there's going to be a whack-a-mole up for this machine, not Raspberry Pi or anything like this. And then when I saw this, and I had no idea, and I, I, I kicked myself for not asking you guys at Midwest, like, hey, is this available or anything? So when I heard you guys were going to come in here, I'm like, why do I know these guys? And then I saw the picture. I'm like, oh, finally, finally, I get to see them and I get them asking me this question. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so cool. I, I really, and what I like about it is the design is so easy, yeah, and it's so easy to comprehend as well. It's, it's perfect for showing kids at school. Yeah, it's very simple design. Uh, it's, it, it, triggering these signals is easy and then it's just okay what what can you come up with what creative use could you come up with and obviously if i can accompany that with a video of someone that's chasing fireworks with it dude i've got a man i'm gonna be dad of the year <laughs> like in brisket you know it's just it, <laughs> it's a great way it's a great way to kind of because that's the thing eh? you know when when you got your c64 we were still at playgrounds and we would share this knowledge and we would lift each other up and do things right now in school they're on roblox and you know it's just there's no interaction on on that level and you know we, we've got to somehow bring that back because we're going to generate this next generation of super engineers you know that that's and it's 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 not rocket science it's only rocket science if you don't want to learn you know and and mm -hmm. uh, and, and i think you 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 build something here that's super usable and reusable as well. So huge yeah. kudos to you and, and your group of friends, man. So I'm yeah. curious, you got this relay board and you do stuff besides the 64 and the Amiga. Have you hooked this to like an Atari XL or any other computers from back in the day? Um, I have not, but the, okay. the so I wrote the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's like a bridge program that oh, hooks okay. up one of these. And it uh, hooks up to like a serial port. So any computer with serial port, this is on our GitHub too, by the way. Oh, cool. It, if it's got a serial port and it can write out a string of ones and zeros, psh, you can it'll it. do it. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Mm -hmm. So again, simple. So that's yeah. So so where is it going to take next? Have you got a list of projects that you kind of want to use this uh, board for? I, I What I love is like the high scoring and you're kind of bringing it to uh, what was uh, Arcade Galaxy? I eh? remember where they had the online scoreboard for your arcade games. You're now taking this crazy game to a level where, okay, via Meatloaf, you can kind of, that's, <laughs> that's just awesome. Yeah, well, the hope is that uh, when I was working with Jamie, we create the API, then other people can use it in their games yeah, right. or whatever. So that's the main thing, really. Right. Our stuff, a lot of it is just, we do it just to have fun and, you know, it. we don't really take it very seriously, you know, at all. Yeah. It's you a know? great way to come together and have a joint uh, a joint hobby. In a way, you recreated the uh, schoolyard eh, of back in the day when you still had the C64 and had your listings and all of that, you know, it's, I think, I think that's really cool. I, it's, that's really cool. I, um, <laughs> I, I want to build this thing now. I'm telling you. I, I'm curious. I want to see it when you're done. 
I, I, I and you will. I will. I've, I've got a whole woodworking shop here as well. This is yeah. this is right up my alley. This is this, this, this is going to be very very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And and to create a portable as well. I like how you created something that you can bring to a show. I think often these shows lack a little bit of you know yeah ice to it. And this is this is this is very cool. Yeah, so that's one of yeah. I'm thinking feature creep here. So I'm thinking already feature creep because that's what Yuri needs in his life. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking since you're plugged into the user port, mm -hmm. I've got quite a bit of experience with the user port because that's where my Y modem and stuff plugs into. Um, clearly bidirectional. So obviously the next step is to have big seven segment displays for your score. Oh, yeah. Big red seven mm -hmm. segment displays. The old school ones. Yeah, yeah. the big old school the ones. Big ones, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like on Papa Shop, like on the basketball game, yeah. the big old, it's like yeah. that. Well, it, because it's got the relays as well, and, you know, in the electronic kits for the kits, you know, you can put anything on it. Put a horn on it. If you have sure. three three wrong in a row, the horn goes on, and it's going to be one uh -huh. long. You know, something like that. If you want to, yeah. again, if you want to attract a certain uh, uh, crowd, you got to going to be creative i'm going to ask the kids what what we could do uh something like this but this yeah. i this is the type of stuff that i don't know man i don't know what they put in the sugar of the waffle house man in that it tastes very good but clearly it does more than that it has no alcohol <laughs> in it i can attest to that but <laughs> well i can assure you that uh all the stuff that me and my friends do is not what you'd call usual right <laughs> right yeah but 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 very very original now um did you have um did you have a lead did you like store your machine at some point in time did you sell your machine how how did that journey go for for from uh yours yeah. i think brian is joining as well brian oh, oh, oh he's got a nice. figure out already hey, hey brian. Nice. i'm sorry i got a cold and i'm not at my desk Hey, also, don't don't worry, man. I I I don't have a cold, and I'm not in my best. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I can't remember where we at. <laughs> sorry, I, I, I so I was I, I was asking you like you had your C sixty four. What where did that journey go? Did you pack it away, or did you sell it, or how did you come back uh, to this, or did you never leave it? No, I actually my. Commodore got stored a long, long time ago. And as much as I hate to admit it, you know, I joined the Air Force, went off. I was, and what I really regret is not really knowing back in around 2000 era, 2007, we, I could have bought so much stuff, you know, and yeah, I brought yeah. it because but, everybody was just literally throwing it out. Throwing it away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so I got back into it around what 2018 or so. Okay. Oh yeah, prices are already up at that point. Yeah. Mm. A different world. Then you had to buy them again indeed. Yeah. How, how about you, Brian? Did you did you get rid of your machines or did you keep them in storage? Yeah, sadly, sadly I did. And you know, I came I came back to it, you know, I was had had thought for so many years that emulation was acceptable and right. emulation was, was fine. Yeah. And I ended up building a Raspberry Pi in the first 64C um, cases that were were recreated, right. yeah, and then awesome. that just it was it was awesome because I bought a you know keyboard and it felt right and it right. was like going right. home. Right. And then I'm on eBay like within a week after building it, and. Um, I'm on eBay looking at real ones and <laughs> came back and then it, you know, that's, that's just kind of where it all started. And then it was just buying everything that I, I could get. Say, I will say this. I did have my Commodore 64, but it was just in the garage. The whole time. Okay. So it was probably in a poor stage by the, by the time you found it, uh, found it again. So yeah. is it still the same one you have? From from back in the day, uh, one of them, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's that's amazing. That's, that's pretty cool. rare, actually, because most of us got rid of ours, and then well, yeah, especially uh, those those that serve. You know, many of them sure. are traveling, and just you know, what are you going to bring with you? You know, and who's going to keep it where where you store it when you go away? You know, that's a lot of people have cleaned up uh, over the years, right? 
<laughs> so, but and I think Brian, in your case, I see an Atom in the back. That's the uh, world's largest uh, PC box. Eh? I, I every time yeah. I see one of those, I'm I'm just imagining what that child must have looked like <laughs> in the store when they said, "I want to have that one." <laughs> yeah, giant yeah. box. You know, I love and you know when when we were young. I mean, I was I was very much the Commodore fanboy, you know. Yeah. Commodore was the only thing. Everything else was inferior. Yeah. And that's been one thing that's been fantastic about coming back to this as a grown-up with grown-up sensibilities. Yeah. It's <laughs> getting to go back and see the awesome points with all those other machines. Yeah. And aside from the the whole tape decks erasing things, right. you know, problem that the the Adam had, that is an awesome machine. Yeah. It's got bonkers you know, why you would put the power supply in the printer. <laughs> I you know, it, it's got bonkers design decisions, but it's an incredible machine all the all the same. And I, I love the I love the Atom. Um and I love my Atari XL. I've got a <clears throat> um eight hundred XL and it's just it's great to get to see these machines through a different lens. I right than it's easier now as well. Eh? But back then, you had to make a choice. You were either that or that. Uh, now I you remember the rivalries, there. though. We had rivalries as, as oh, people, totally. young people. Oh, totally. Oh, crazy. I remember being in Sears store. <laughs> yeah. And Sears had a display for the Commodore 64. And then they had, um, what was it? Um, some other computer at the time. It wasn't an Apple. It was something else. Maybe a Franklin even or something like that. I think and, I, 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 our Sears had laser. Oh, laser. Yeah, laser 128. Yeah. Laser 128. Yeah, Apple the, clone. Yeah. Apple compatible. Yeah. Yep, I know that project. Well, I worked on that project, actually. Um, but we'd go in and we'd type in there like, you know, this computer sucks. And then we'd, we'd run it forever in the loop, right? And then the 64, this this is the greatest computer ever. Then we'd have that running. Or it was the VIC-20, I think, at the time, whatever. Yeah, we used to do all that. All the time. It's a huge rivalry. And remember, the user groups were the same way. They were like yeah. you know, anti so hey, if you were right, Atari, right? you were out, man. You were looking no through it, an adult <laughs> lens. Now you can say, okay, well, you know, the Pokey really was a good chip in the Atari, you know, and you know, this computer had this function that was good. Um, Coco yeah. computers had some advantages, and so I just now that we are older and and right. wiser, you can right. pick and choose your favorite features from your computers. Yeah, that's kind of one of the things that we feature on our YouTube channel is the stories we integrate just what you're talking about right there yeah. the old rivalries and all yeah. that yeah you know? which is fun man because they were real they were real they were. remember oh, we yeah. have listings and someone can buy oh well, my atari we can do this in like 10 lines yeah. and, oh, I know. and we can do the graphics better and this and all it would be it was on it was on uh, unless unless you were the sorry person i grew up in europe uh unless you were the sorry person that had zx spectrum you had no <laughs> That you, there was nothing to compete or anything. You just, <laughs> you, just or you yeah. better disown your parents and just never see them again. Might as well run away from home because, you know, don't even say a calculator will be better than that thing. Um, but, yeah, it's it's nice to see. Uh, and, and and it's nice now to to see kind of I, I remember with the C64 and that interested me with with your um, with a relay project as well. There were some. We had a, a Fisher Technic, and there was some Lego as well that had these type of uh, uh, connections. But I couldn't afford that. That was like that was like the Lego train. No one had the Lego train. We saw it in the catalog, but no one had that. It was like you. So you dream of that. The fact that you kind of kind of revisit this now, you get for maybe twenty bucks or so on Amazon. You can get a relay card that you can hook up to your user port, and then. You know, people have written some cool piece of software to make that use, but that's a child's dream come true. That's that's what it is, and that's it's very very cool to see and to live in a time where a lot of similar thinking people from a very similar era that no matter where they were in the world, all kind of grew up with that type of dream, kind of create this type of stuff. I think is incredible. Yep. You know, and that's uh, another thing is we noticed that there wasn't a whole lot of projects that did like user port stuff. Uh, I'm not talking about like what we modems and stuff, but like taking right. stuff out into the real world, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, the smoker yeah. is a great example. There's no reason why not to do it. This is exactly yeah. what that is made for. And you make it very practical as well. And I do like that uh, that piece as well. I think now we're we're almost growing in a, a generation of, uh, you know, sorry for using the word of code monkeys, but, you know, real practical use of how do you yeah. interface to something else and, and be able to explain that in a very visible way. You know, I, I think it's long overdue. I, I think a whole generation has missed out on that. And there's, now we have an opportunity to get this next generation ready for that. So I, I, I think it's super cool. And But to have the creative minds to come up with, like, how do I attract an audience? How do I do something different? different that's yeah. the real genius. That is, yeah. that, that, that takes the mind of uh, real yes. creative people. Yeah, thank I, you very much. Thanks for having us here. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. So I have to ask you guys, we, we always ask this to people that um, are in the retro community that have experience with different machines. What is your favorite machine? No matter who makes it, what machine is the most favorite? Well, you know, I think that, you know, my gut reaction real or the knee-jerk reaction is just to say Commodore 64 rules, right? But, you know, I'd have to do a little bit of thinking on that one. Oh, how about you, yeah. Brian? No, I'm, uh, it's it's easy for me. I I wanted an Amiga in 1985, and my parents just said, no, we're not spending that much money. Yeah, um, right. And by the time the 90s came around and it was actually you know, out there, affordable. I got a 500, and I, I still to this day just love the love the Amiga and all of the potential that it had that was so largely untapped. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in the marketplace. I mean, that's right, still right. the tragedy of the Amiga to me. Yeah, uh, but I, the Amigas are my favorite machines. Yeah, yeah, it came out too early eh, for its capabilities. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's incredible to think that, you know, the the sixty four was still climbing in marketplace right. when the Amiga was being designed. Yeah, and you you think about nineteen eighty five, and the Amiga was out with, you know, everything that it could do in the multitasking and custom chips and everything. I mean, Colors, that was so colors, far ahead of anything sounds. else. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was like Siri said, it was probably a little too early for its time, but mm -hmm. it's probably a good thing that they did it because Atari wasn't far behind. So when, you know, the ST was the competition to, you know, the, yeah. the standard Amigas. But yeah, I remember I got my first Amiga 1000. It was soft kick still. You know, we didn't have hard ROMs for it yet and all that stuff. But I, that was my day jobs, you know, designing hardware and software for. Commodore computers basically was what I did for a living. And so I had to get one and I was, I was so stunned by the difference, the contrast between the two, because I've worked on 64 for a long time at that point. I was like, there's no way I'm going back to 64 after touching this thing. I can just tell. And so I remember it was a struggle for me to even want to go back and do updates of software on 64 because the Amiga was so much better in every respect from a ah. development standpoint and everything and fun. And I was, I'm not a gamer. I mean, I'm a hardware designer and software engineer. It, to, to me, it was just a, a great thing to work on. And there was no documentation for anything in the beginning. I, I mean, it was still like, it was all limited stuff. It kind of reminds me when I first got on the pet. So I got a pet in 1977, the very first I, batch that came out. My dad was a museum director, and so he got one from the museum and dropped it in my lap and said, here, learn how to program this. And so there was no documentation. So I think, in a way, I love the, the, the pet. It was like my favorite computer of all time because of it was my first one. And I love the Amiga, I think both for the same reason. I had to learn them. I had to understand them. I didn't have somebody to, to give me a manual to try this. I had to experiment. I had to learn things. And so I have a real uh, connection with those machines just because of the fact that I had to be so involved in, in learning process on them. Great machines. I mean, they're a lot of great machines. So I had buddies. That I had think we were time. so far ahead of that time. I think that yeah. was the good piece though. But to me, it felt 
Had, the Commodore 64 was the people's computer. Yeah. Every family reasonably could argue why they would uh, want one. And uh, it was also the first time that schools hesitantly may have started accepting some matrix printer printouts for a school report or something. Right, it, right, it made yeah. the case. The Amiga was pure luxury. It was... Oh, yeah. It wasn't the schools. The school system hadn't figured out what to do with it yet. They were several years behind, and you just saw, you saw the divide happening, the haves and not haves. And I saw, I saw it in the school schoolyard as well. You know, some people had these cool games and they had samples and all of that. And I was thinking like, oh, one day I'll have that. But you had to like sell all of your stuff, all of your Commodore stuff. You had to sell. And then still work your paper out or whatever, you know, you were trying to scrape, scrape money and, and try and buy a 500. It was, it was a very expensive uh, adventure. It was, and, and because the parents, in my case, the parents were just not willing to uh, fork out, similar to you, Brian, to fork out that money. They just said, that's, that's ridiculous. Hey, we had one computer in our house and that was it. Yeah, and it was the Commodore sixty four. Yeah, and for well, we and for years we hadn't even on the shared television, like mm. that, that. So you couldn't even use it the whole day. Hey, it still works. That is the other thing as well. I think it was the end of maybe an end of an era as well, eh, where you still budget your TV for ten years and your dishwasher for like, and this was like a, it was a real luxury item, but it was unbelievable what it could do. Eh? It was just and and to your point, uh, Jim, going back in time was hard. Once you've touched an Amiga. Well, I remember, so we were at the user group meeting. And they just, and holy moly. They just got the first batch of Amigas at, at SoftCell or one of the local computer stores. Yeah. And so a guy named Bill it was at the normal user group meeting, the 64. Yeah. He came in with the 1000, set it up, and it was a kick disc and all this stuff. And it was funny to me because this is so, this is what, late 85, right, when it first came out. And we just barely had fast load on the 1541s. My. And I remember the disk drive going click, 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 click. I'm thinking, yeah. oh my God, this thing loads so yeah. fast. Yeah. And then I saw Marble Madness pop up. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to throw yeah. that 64 in the trash. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah Marble Madness. <laughs> but it was everything, uh, even the floppy disk, because it was a three and a half flop, uh, three and a half yeah. inch disk. Those were expensive. And I, but By you could fit time. so many disks on here. I mean, you could fit, you know, six commodore discs on a, a regular right. you know floppy the three and a half inch yeah it was just it's an interesting time so so now from a, a platform you made you made your game uh work on a on an amiga as well eh? you you showed the the or the, not the game the uh the interface uh work on the uh work on the amiga as well and now as you explained now with a raspberry pi you can basically any serial uh serial interface uh, ready computer you could kind of use this for so now it's more like okay what is what are we going to connect to this next uh, what are we going to do and yeah. are, are you guys already uh planning something for uh for this christmas is there uh, is there something already being cooked up uh, between you guys well i mean we've got some things planned but you know we might want to revisit it and you know think about you know doing some more stuff with the relay board okay who knows you know it's just whatever comes up as an id do you guys get to uh get to spend a lot of time on this do you have like is your your c64 is permanently set up it's not just display you actually have i see it hooked up uh, one of them seems to be hooked up there are they permanently set up for you i've got a, i use a lot of commoners over here I, I move them around all the time okay yeah doing my projects yeah, and Brian, you know, he's got his room over there. He's Dude, got he's got to make a space like no tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like how you've set your camera up. That is like boss level, uh, boss level maker space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 nice. I've been working. I've I moved into this house like almost five years ago now, and this is the last room to get done. Can you pan uh, over and show them the stuff? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> uh, how do I make myself? There I am. That's how I make myself big on Zoom. Let's see here. Let's go. 
Holy moly. That is some space, all right. Whoa, too far. <laughs> yeah, too far. Oh. You have one of those OBS bolt things as well, I guess. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that storage space alone, indeed. Yeah, the storage is great. Oh, my goodness. Nice. Yeah. Wow. You're on the second floor, huh? Wow, that is fantastic. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, that's a great space to work at. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's a it's a lot of fun, and someday I'll get it cleaned up and actually presentable. Yeah, I hey, this is presentable. It's uh, it looks good to me. Uh, looking great. I like how you have the Sony set up as well. You know, it's such a great. Uh, you can connect anything you want there. That's great. Yeah, yeah that's so a question for you. You've got a black computer behind you, mm -hmm. over your shoulder. Yeah. No, not um, you. Um, we don't even know your name other than Citizen. Yeah, you're the black computer. Um, what computer is this, that? Right, yeah, what computer one? is that one? That's just a Linux box. With the red keycaps? Oh, no, this is the... That's an Ultimate with the plexiglass. Um, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, the smoke. Uh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, interesting. Plexiglass. That's pretty Quatu, cool. Quatu Barato Nicto. Oh, nice. All yeah. hell Gort. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that our robot for this, uh, the events for CRX is Gort. <laughs> well, there you go. Yep. Love that movie. That is mm -hmm. awesome. That's <laughs> a very, a very cool setup. Now I'm, um, you know, I'm going to work on this project. My, uh, I know, you know, my daughter just came in. She actually asked for a Posca for Posca markers. So what I've been doing is I, I try and make everything in neutral colors these days because then they can decorate it. Uh, so uh, so that's going to be something cool. I, I hope I can, can somehow kind of get them involved in this and, and have them create something and have their IDs in there as well. I really, as a kid, I dreamt, I'm serious, I dreamt of having a relay board connected to my machine. I was thinking about all the things I could connect up to that. I, I Kind of see if I can maybe bring some of that uh, imagination to uh, my. I, I think it's really cool that we could inspire you to do that. Yeah, you know, just hearing that, it's like we won. <laughs> oh, you totally did. You totally. Yeah. Did. yeah. Very very. So there's only a couple of things back in the day that had relay boards. Really, I remember X, like the X1, for the 64 had yeah. the, the relay set up for it, and I think there was something either in a German magazine. A uh, German magazine, Vion Sector had one. Yeah, had it one was very expensive, very hokey, yeah. uh, and we had it only way past uh, the hype was over. You had Fisher Technique, they had a board. Lego had a board, super expensive. And I'm sure they weren't opto isolated, so it was probably a oh god accident oh, god. waiting to happen for your 64. But we were used to that anyways because we had shack carpet, so the CIA yeah, that's true to be. You know, changed over every now and then. Anyway, <laughs> most people didn't even have the screws in there anymore because you know I had to be opened up uh, anyways. Oh, I didn't have screws in mine. Yeah, I, was... I still don't have screws in mine. <laughs> in yeah. No, I I used to have my fifteen forty one with the case off so I could flick the head. Yeah. Oh, sure. The little top of the motor. Yeah. If it get off, because you know mine would get off on the rails and just sit there and slip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because oh, I yeah. flicked it with my thumb too much. Yeah. yeah. You know, I know I was making it worse, but. Yeah. Well, we did that or put a little, uh, we put a coin on it. Put, put a penny, penny on top on of it. it. Yep. Yeah, put a penny on it to uh, reduce the number of read errors. Yep. None of those discs uh, survived. <laughs> no, they're all scratched up for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're, all, they're all scratched Born up. Worn through. All right, uh, uh, guys. This uh, this was uh, quite uh, is quite entertaining. Uh, it's quite entertaining. So uh, I know you guys uh, also put in. You can get some old project out. You guys put up links in the Discord on uh, where we can uh, where we can find you guys. Uh, for those that yeah. have mobile phones, sh should have already kind of figured out the QR code uh, behind you. Okay. Uh, I'm you know I'm suck at that, so I'll use the Discord. Yeah. Well, that's actually a sign for the retro controllers that, you know, yeah, retro that your, uh, that your mate, uh, that your mate oh, made, cool. uh, because not everybody will have the space or otherwise uh, to uh, to put one of these uh, big ones up. 
Uh, yeah. I, that's a pretty cool idea as well, by the way, to have a, a small uh, version out. And with the um, uh, with the software side being open source, people can start making other games for it as well. Yeah, well, the thing about this is it's more of a, a testament to what retro Game Boys can do. If you have a custom controller idea that you want, run it by him, and he'll be like, and great you want. Remember oh. the uh, the old days? What we had for uh, what was it for? Uh, was it Summer Games or Decathlon or what was it? The the two buttons because we would <laughs> kill every joystick. What was that? <laughs> we kill track everything. and field. Track and field. Was... Track and field in the yeah. and we had the button version. Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah. I I probably spend a hundred dollars on joysticks first before I finally was smart enough to say let's not do that anymore and get ourselves a button. I remember playing track and field in the arcade and it's got the two joystick buttons yeah and we bring a spoon and we oh yeah yeah, yeah. and do it that way yeah, yeah. to to push them so super fast so, uh, so I, I got I, this out of the closet for brian so take oh, a look at this look at that oh, oh wow um, so this actually i had it in a box and of course i got the the dreaded extension cord or burn in from the plastic you know that they, they happens um so I worked at Central Point Software. I did copy two. And while I was there, the Laser 128 project was theirs. And so we did all the ROM code for this, the clean room ROM code. And it was pseudo compatible. So I, I did a lot of the graphics testing for the HDR modes and HDR2 for the Apple compatibility. So wow, that's cool. I got to keep the machine that I worked on while I was there. And so this is the machine from back in the day. So it's wow, that is super cool. Me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, somebody gave me an Apple too. They want me to make the wackadoodle work with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Oh goodness, that's us awesome. Joystick card. Yeah. I think, I think it's bidirectional. You can do it in the joystick card. Oh really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's how you can always put a, make a regular plug-in card. There's a couple of different cards for the Apple II right now that are just simply an expansion card. So it should I be see. pretty easy to uh to just interface right into it. Right. I, I think everybody that comes to you and says, can you make this work for, for another uh, system? Um, you kind of want to say, okay, I want you, I'll do that or I'll look into that. Um, and I want you to give me a good idea of how it could be used on that, mm. you know, yeah. something like that. You want to, you want to see these things in the field that, that that's what you want to do. You want to, yeah, I'll make sure that Yuri shows you his finished product. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> like I said, these buttons have been waiting for this game. I something. Yeah. Super. I'm super excited. Uh, super excited about that. And uh, today's gonna the day. Cool. going to be something cool. That's so. awesome. All right, All right, guys. Well, um, we, Really appreciate you showing up for our event. I really appreciate the effort that you went through to redo yeah, a video yeah, yeah. and all this stuff. Kudos, and kudos, the... kudos, because uh, yeah. you guys came in with something that didn't quite fit CRX. You said, like, and you were super cool about it and said, why don't yeah. I turn around and create something uh, that might be a better fit? Huge kudos for that, man. That is yeah. like great example to everybody. Like, on um, you know, not just pivoting on a dime, but actually, you know, performing and, yeah. and coming through with something for us Kudos. so that was awesome yeah. and then you know you hooked yeah. yuri so that's a great thing yeah yeah I, well, i'm so <laughs> glad i got chick i would have had to wait for another year for midwest now i didn't know if you were going to sign up again or anything you yeah. know so very very cool brian thanks. Yeah, thank awesome. you thank you for having us thank you yeah, thank, yeah, thank you so brian. much i appreciate you being there and good luck cleaning the rest of your room, getting it all the way you want it to. It looks good already, but it's going to be I great. That's such luxury, done. man. That is just, that's yeah. just showing off that luxury. That is, I love it. That's yeah. awesome, man. Oh, well, thank you. you. All right, guys. I guess guys, we'll bid you adieu. Have a great day today. Thank uh, you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. City Man. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel. Right here on City's End. Pay for my season for an 8 tomorrow.